Hello everyone, my name is Cassie and today I have a watercolor tutorial that was requested quite a while ago, but due to a wrist injury I have been a little slow getting it done. For that I am sorry. Today we're working with the Precious Poinsettia by Gina K Designs. I have it stamped on some Arches cold press watercolor paper. I often get asked what ink to use for no line watercoloring and the truth is you can use a lot of different inks as long as they're really light. I like Ink on 3's Fade Out Ink or Gina K's Whisper Ink. Both of those work fabulously. I will have links to both of those and the stamp set in the description below. I have some watercolors from a couple different brands. I will have the names of the paints on the screen as I paint. I also have a palette for mixing, a rag to dry my brushes on, a paper towel to blot up any extra paint. I also have some water that is off screen and I have a variety of brushes. And with that, let's go ahead and jump in. I'm going to start out by mixing my petal color. I want a pink poinsettia, so I'm gonna start with the Quinn Magenta by Core. I love the movement of Core's paints. They really spread when they touch water. But this magenta is super bright, so I'm going to tone it down by adding a little bit of Quinn Maroon by Roman Schmalz. I always like to test my mix on a piece of scrap watercolor paper to make sure it's the color that I want. Also, make sure when you're mixing that you mix a large enough puddle that you will be able to paint your entire flower. Right here, I'm just testing how well this pink is going to flow into the green for the leaves. And it looks like it's going to work just fine. So with that, I'm ready to start painting. To start my poinsettia, I'm going to load my brush with that pink mixture that we just mixed up and I will zoom you in so you can see a little bit better what I'm doing. Hold on. There we go. I'll be working on my poinsettia one petal at a time and I'm going to lay the paint down where the color would be the darkest. So it will be your shadow areas. So for this petal I'm going right along the edges where the petals above are casting a shadow on this petal. I'm then taking a clean, damp brush and I'm pulling that color down towards the tip. I'm not worrying about covering every single square inch of that petal. Leaving some white spots is fine. I'm also adding just a little bit of dark color at that tip to help give it a little bit of shape. I will continue adding just little spots of darkish color wherever I need to define the edge, but it's okay to have some lost edges where the color almost fades into white. At this point, I'm happy with what it looks like for a first layer, so I'm going to let this petal dry and I'm going to choose another petal to start working on. And I'm going to repeat that same process, laying down the darkest color where I want the shadows to be and then pulling the color out with a clean, damp brush. Keep in mind as you're doing this, the shape of each petal, how it curves, how it curls, and where shadows might be. This is what's going to give your petal dimension. You may have noticed that I skipped a petal in between my first petal and the petal I am working on now. That is because I don't want to work right next to a wet petal. If you do that, your color can bleed from one petal to the other and you will lose the shape of your petals. I'm going to continue painting both of the flowers in the exact same way and I'll speed it up so you don't get bored. And I will be back in a minute.
For the stamen of these flowers, I'm not worried about a lot of detail, but I am going to dot in the colors, and I'm going to layer a bunch of different colors to give it dimension. So I am prepping my colors right now. I'm going to start with a base layer of Quinn Gold. This is by Daniel Smith. And I'm just kind of dabbing it in there to get an irregular shape. Next, I'm going in with some undersea green. And here you see my wrist failing me and I drop my brush. And yes, there is paint smeared across my beautiful flower. It happens to all of us. Don't panic. A clean, damp brush over the paint, a little paper towel, and it's better and we can continue going. Okay, continuing on with our undersea green, and I am not covering the entire area. I am going wet on wet, so I did not let the yellow dry before dotting in the green. I'm letting them kind of blend and do their own thing. I'm also dotting in a little bit of that pink from the poinsettia, and I'm letting all of those colors just marinate in the middle. And we will come back to them in a minute. At this point, the first layer on my flowers is completely dry, so I'm ready to go in with some shadow. I'm going to be using Moon Glow by Daniel Smith for this. So I am getting a puddle of Moon Glow on my palette so that I can control how wet it is. And I'm going to load my brush with that Moon Glow and put it right into the shadows, just like you did when you first laid down your pink. And I will go in with a damp brush again, a clean damp brush to soften that out. But I am not taking it all the way down. I'm just softening it to the edge of the shadows. Don't be afraid to go dark in your dark areas of shadow. Contrast really helps. So I am varying how much of the moon glow I'm putting in. I'm leaving some areas darker, some areas lighter. And I'll just continue working my way through both of the flowers. I'm also going to start adding in some darker shadows in the stamen area. So I still have Moon Glow on my brush, and I'm just dotting in some deeper shadows, softening them up, and then I'm dabbing away just a little bit of that paint with my paper towel. I'm going to build the stamen up slowly because I have a little bit more control over it that way. And now back to adding shadows to our petals. Because I chose to use Moon Glow as my shadow color, it has really changed the overall fill of the flower to a little bit more purple than I would like. So I'm going to go in with my pink mixture again and go over some of those shadows just to bring that pink tone back into the flower. I'm also going to add some areas of darker pink that don't have any Moon Glow in them, but will still read as lighter shadows. This again helps bring dimension to the flower. And our stamen need a little bit more color in there now, so I'm adding more of that darker pink in there, some darker green, and just building up those colors. Be sure to leave some areas lighter and some areas darker. Moving on to our leaves now, I'm actually going to use three brushes for this now. 
The first brush will have green, the second brush will have clean water, and the third brush will have the same pink that we used in our petals. So that pink brush is just a little bit smaller, so you'll be able to tell when I'm using that brush. For my leaves, I am going to be using undersea green, just like I used in the stamen. And just like the petals, we're putting our darkest color right where the shadow will be. So I'm looking at where the petals go over the leaf and that casts a shadow. So I'm putting my darkest color there. Then I'm going to use my second brush with the clean water on it to help pull that color out throughout the rest of the leaf. This is the same thing that we did with our petals. Adding in a little bit darker areas to help define the shape, softening that out. And then while this is still wet, I'm going to drop in a little bit of that same pink we used in our petals. Adding in the petal color to the leaf adds a little bit of extra interest and helps tie the leaves into the flowers. I'm keeping my pink fairly light you can see that my green started acting a little bit weird. That's because it dried too much. So I'm gonna add just a little bit more green into there. But the real trick to this is you want to just leave it alone and don't mess with it too much. Once you get your color in there, let it dry. Let it spread and do its thing. If you fuss with it too much, your pink and your green will start to mix. And when pink and green mix, they turn into a muddy color. So you need to just let it move on its own. And don't get scared if it looks odd right now. This is just our first layer. One of the hardest things that I had to learn when I was learning how to paint is that paintings go through ugly stages. And I always thought that, that meant that my painting was bad and I would give up on it. But you have to push through the ugly stage to get to the amazing stage. So don't give up too soon. Go through the whole process and you might just amaze yourself. Once the leaves are done, you can go ahead and add in your stems. So make sure that all of your leaves connect to your stem and bring that stem all the way down. We're using the undersea green and the pink just like we did with our leaves. When your first layer is dry, you can go in and add the shadows. I'm using Moon Glow again for the leaves. This helps unify the shadows on the petals and the leaves. And again, I'm just putting it right where those shadows would be, then pulling it out with my clean down brush. I'm not worrying about where my pinks and my greens are, I'm treating it as a single leaf and not different colors. Since I'm still recovering from my wrist injury, you may have noticed I don't have the best brush control right now. So I went out of the lines here and I'm just going to get it wet where it was over the line and dab it up with a paper towel and it is fixed. This doesn't work with every color, but it's always worth a try. Once that layer is dry, I'm gonna do the same thing I did with my petals and go over some of my shadows with the undersea green to help bring the green back into the leaf. I'm also going to create some lighter shadows around some of the edges of the leaves to make it look like the leaf is curled or creased a little bit. And a little more shadow in my stamens and I am ready to check my work. Value, or how light or dark something is, is actually more important than what color you use. So you can check your values by looking at your image through your phone with a black and white filter turned on. 
if you can still tell what all the shapes are and you can find all of your lines, you have good values. There were a couple areas of mine that needed a little bit more contrast, so I'm gonna go ahead and add in some darker colors to help build the contrast in those areas. You can stop there if you want, but if you wanna have a little fun, add extra water to your pink, your purple, and your green, and splatter them over your image. I like to load up my brush and then hover it over my paper and tap with my other hand. I'm keeping my splatters in kind of a diagonal across the page. Any splatters that get on your paper where you don't want them, you can dab them up with the paper towel. And here we have a look at our poinsettia all painted and ready to be turned into a card. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope it helped you and that you learned something from it. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and leave me a comment. If you wanna see more from me, you can find my Instagram linked in the description below as well as the products that I used. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you again soon.